G'day guys and welcome to our, I'm not even sure, I think this is our fourth live stream answering your questions about living in Australia, moving to Australia. For context, my name's Ross and I moved with my family to Australia during a global pandemic nearly four years ago, about three and a half. So in six months we can actually apply for citizenship. Tell us what do you want to know? Ask us any questions far away in the chat and we will do our best to answer. Also, let us know, is there anything wrong with the view? Anything wrong with the camera? Can you hear us okay? Let us know, and I'll try and fix it if I can. Hopefully, there's nothing wrong. Perfect. Cheers, Reality Flyer. Got any questions about moving to or living in Australia? Hey, Kelly. Hey, Nighthawk. How's it going? Hey, Luliana. I hope I got that one right. Hello, Will Ray. Some buffering. Hopefully that's fixed. Hi, Blue. Yeah, we have to learn how to pronounce that one, Luliana. Luliana? Cheers, Andrew. <clears throat> Hi, Selesh. Anyone with any questions? Lots of hellos, lots of highs. Hello from Glasgow. What's the weather like there today? Ah, family friend of Karen and Kevin. Well, I'm sure you've probably got better things to do on a Saturday. Kelly, just starting the skills assessment PTE test on the 18th of March. Good luck. I did the IELTS, which I've heard is a bit harder. However, they can be a little bit picky, particularly on the speaking part. So my only advice for that would be just remember it's a test and try to use the fanciest words that you can. And if you do have a particularly strong accent, perhaps like uh, the chap from Glasgow, mm, try and sound as posh as you can. Nighthawk, is the housing search as bad as it's been made out to be? Do you know what? It's not good. However, a lot of people that I've spoken to that have moved over here, um, particularly recently, so, you know, in the last few months, definitely in the last year, they haven't experienced any major problems. So there's two bits of advice that I can give. Um, the first one is don't be too restricted on the budget that you have. Obviously, if you have only got a really, really tight budget, you're going to find it more difficult potentially. So what can you do for that? Try and save up as much money as you can. It doesn't mean that you need to spend over the odds, but obviously the more that you have um, in the short term, at least the more choice you have. And then the second piece of advice really is don't have a, a specifically fixed place where you want to live, um, like just one suburb. Like Have a few different places particularly that you would want to live in. Um, and just kind of see what is about. I, um, we, we moved into a, a unit when we first moved to Australia. We knew that it wasn't going to be our forever home. Um, it might be somewhere that we might have to live for a year. Um, but it, it turned out that we were only there for a few months, and we just took it because it was half decent and, and something where we could go and live. Uh, I think if you have that kind of mentality, you're going to be a lot more successful in finding something. Uh, Kento, hello from the Philippines. Oh, I'm going there in a few months. Got to go and see the family. Um, wet, windy, and six degrees. <sighs> yeah, not, not a fan of that anymore. Uh, worrying about wraparound childcare whilst on unsocial hours. I'm a nurse. Husband is a scaffolder. So, 
Kelly, for that one, I guess if you are talking about night shifts and stuff, I'm assuming your husband's not really going to be scaffolding during the evening. Um, he could look after kids then. It also depends on what visa you're on. So if you are on a permanent residency visa, then it's going to be a lot easier because realistically you can access childcare. You'll have childcare subsidy. It should be quite affordable for you. However, if it's something that you kind of aren't um, on a permanent residency visa or in a temporary visa, it's going to be a little bit more tricky. Um, I would suggest speaking to your employer and, and seeing what they can do with regards to how flexible you can be on, on the working. Peter, how have the kids coped with the move? Uh, fantastically. Aurora was 18 months when she moved. Sierra was not even born, so she doesn't know any different. And to be honest, with Aurora's age, she doesn't really know any different either. When they went back uh, nearly six months ago now, Aurora, I guess, was pretending that she knew stuff from England, but she realistically, she had no idea. She just likes making stuff up. Kia, do you have any advice for moving to Perth for families? The cost of living. Oh, I can hear a child. One second. Yes, One of them got out of bed. <clears throat> right. Uh, how the kids cope to Kia. Do you have any advice for moving to Perth for families, the cost of living, housing and areas? Uh, to be honest, no. Um, <laughs> long standing joke. Apparently, I hate Perth. I've never been. But uh, it's not true. Do I know a lot about Perth? Not really. So the first thing I can suggest is there's a, a couple of families that we've had on our podcast. Um, Albie and Lou or Zander Down Under. Um, Thompson's Go Aussie. Definitely uh, speak to them on Instagram, hit them up. They live in Perth, um, weirdly very close to each other. Perhaps ask them. Um, with regards to cost of living, I mean, it's not necessarily going to be cheap. Um, rentals, you're going to probably expect to pay 500 plus, probably realistically 600 plus per week. Um, areas, I'm told the north side is particularly good for, uh, particularly for British families. So um, get onto realestate.com.au and uh, see what's kind of within your budget. And uh, when you s find some of the areas, um, then contact, uh, contact us on Instagram, let us know, and we'll try and zero it down there. It's, it's kind of a really uh, open question just to say, oh, what area should I live in Australia? It's like, mm, well, what do you want, mate? Like, there's so many great places to live. Um, Liliana, Liliana, still haven't quite decided. What would be a good household income so you can live comfortably in Brisbane? We're a couple with no children. Well, they just announced very recently within the last week that apparently the average um, income in Australia now has hit $100,000. So, and that's per person. So I would go as far as to say if you, any of you are earning close to that, around that, you, you're not going to be doing too badly. It also depends on on where in Brisbane it is that you want to live. The closer to the city, obviously, the, the more expensive it's going to be and how much more money you'd need. I, I'd go as far as to say, uh, if you've got a combined household income that is over $150,000, so you're talking about 75000 bucks each, with no kids, that's going to be comfortable. Uh, Blue, is the Australia schooling the same as the UK? My son starts year one this year. Would he also be year one there? No, uh, it's the same in the sense that um, yeah, the curriculum and stuff is pretty similar. The school years are different. They start in January and they run up until the December. Uh, and it's tricky that as well, because in each state, it the intake is slightly different. Generally speaking, I go as far as to say he might, uh, well, if he starts year one, assuming that's actually year one and not reception, he'd probably be in prep. Again, he might have to redo a year. 
it's quite a common thing that happens. It's just the way that the calendar years kind of fall for, for schooling. Uh, Zen Den, love the channel. We're moving over to Perth in May and can't wait to get out of England. I absolutely bet you can't. Uh, so many people I speak to trying to move out from the UK. Uh, there's lots of good things about England, but they're more f nostalgic rather than where the country is going. Uh, Kelly, you're on your 189 PR. Congratulations. Lots of people would love permanent residency. Uh, Chicky Med, looking to move to Australia from the UK as a doctor soon for further training. How is the life and pay there for doctors? Is uh, It's tough in the NHS. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I would go to say, like teaching, I'm a teacher. Um, it's easier. Generally speaking, they're going to pay you more. The working conditions uh, are better. Uh, and then most importantly, the stuff that you can do outside of work uh, is a lot more fulfilling. So, you know, the lifestyle, generally speaking, you're not having to go to work in the dark, go home in the dark. Um, you just don't aren't really brought down by that kind of thing. So uh, in total, it's, it's good. Um, if there are any doctors that have moved over here and would love to come onto our podcast, it'd be really interesting hearing how different it is. Um, but I know you doctors, anyone that works in the health service, you're really, really busy. Kelly, thanks. No, no worries. That's the whole point of the podcast, uh, whole point of the, the lives. Nighthawk, do you think 150 gross income for a family of four outside? Yep, absolutely. It's like uh, you were reading my mind. Uh, Kento, are math teachers really in demand in Australia? Absolutely. Um, pretty much every time I see a school that is advertising for teachers, um, one of those roles will be a math teacher. So you'll definitely be in demand if you are a math teacher and if you, you've quite high level math teachers as well. Um, if you can do basic stuff, obviously that's in demand, but what do they call it here? Like further maths, um, I can't remember. I'm not a maths teacher, but if you, the higher maths, the more complicated maths you can do, even better. Um, and do schools there offer visa sponsorship? They do. So um, normally speaking, you're probably going to have to go for more independent schools that are a little bit more rural, a little bit more outside of the city centres. They're the ones that, generally speaking, would like to offer the sponsorship only because um, they find it harder to recruit. If you want to live in the cities, then pretty much you're going to have to apply for your visa. Um, as a teacher, you probably get permanent residency uh, and then just move over here and take a chance. I found my job whilst we were in um, hotel quarantine. So within the first three days of being here. And then I started my job when we, when we left. So it's not that hard to find a job, particularly if you come um, when terms are about to start. Or like I said, in that January, when the schools are going back, realistically, look to try and get roles about September, and you should be good for that. Michelle, how much deposit do banks look for in Australia for a mortgage? 20%. 20% is generally speaking the golden rule. Um, if you can get that, uh, if you can get more, then that's even better. Um, but any less than that, you can get a mortgage. There just might be some extra kind of like lender's insurance type of stuff that you might have to get. So 20% is the general kind of rule. Uh, Oscar's Arts, do you know if the AQF7 is equivalent to the UK level six bachelor? I'm a nurse in the UK and hoping to make the move with my family. No, I don't know. Um, and that is one of the reasons why we partner with a, a really good visa agency. Any kind of technical stuff with regards to your qualifications and what you are in specifically entitled to i just recommend speak to true blue migration services um any of our videos pretty much uh, you'll be able to find the link to their website mention us use their free visa uh, assessment and they will tell you exactly what that qualification is equivalent to uh, and then what visa you'll be entitled to and then the next steps and it's all completely no obligation you don't have to take it any further but we use the visa agent um, I don't know how I would have been able to cope with all of the, the forms and everything. I'm just not very good at that kind of stuff. Um, and using a visa agent like True Blue Migration Services, it's going to be so much easier to get out here. It, moving over to Australia is complicated enough without having to try and do as much stuff as you can on your own. Uh, and if you're ever worried about how much the visa agents cost and things like that, it's all moderated by Mara. Um Obviously, True Blue is part of Mara. Uh, it is a fixed price. That's the same as what they all kind of charge. And I basically earned back how much our visa agent cost um, in the first three to six months of moving here. So think about it more like an investment rather than a, 
something another hurdle that you have to jump to because there's there's enough hurdles anyway um nighthawks on a pr fantastic peter brown how have you and the missus coped with the move in total uh fantastically um for now this is is definitely our home um i think sam had it confirmed for her a bit more when she went back to the uk uh about six months ago one of the things that she said to me was you know apart from friends and family, there's not a lot left there for us and and what kind of life we can lead in Australia now. So it's, it's not to say that everything's perfect. Um, there are definitely ups and downs. You definitely have days where you feel um, a little bit more homesick. Recently, weirdly enough, I've felt a little bit homesick. For me, it kind of happens cyclically on an annual basis. Um, I don't know why. I think perhaps it's got something to do with Arsenal doing well in the league and just hearing Arsenal forever every time. I don't know why. That's something I miss, but I still get to see it. Kelly, we will be staying with family at first, so not a fixed. Unsure how that would put us for getting our child into education. Um, so that one of the things that they would need to do, I'm actually in the process of completing uh, a video about what it's like and how to get your kid into school, because that's something that we faced this year for the first time, getting all into prep. Um, so hopefully I should be able to answer those questions there. But one of the things that they will definitely need is um, proof of address. So I guess if your driver license had that address on it, um, be a bit w difficult to kind of prove. I don't know, um, but they, they, you will be able to. Get, so the rule, generally speaking, is is if you live within the catchment of the school, um, and you can prove you that you live there, they can't turn you away. So even if they're full, they just kind of have to make a space. Um, so as long as you can prove that you live there in whatever capacity, then you should be fine. Uh, Kia, thank you. No worries. Liliana, thank you. No, thank you for tuning in. Uh, G'day from Melbourne. Hi, Lynn. Nighthawk, how... Oh, I've just scrolled too much. How is the cost of living compared to the UK with the higher wages, higher cost of living? Are you better off each month in Australia or the UK? Um, I mean, it's tricky because I haven't got the exact figures. I know that I am paid, I reckon, about... I mean, it fluctuates with the um, exchange rate, obviously, but uh, to put it into perspective, I, I'm just an English teacher uh, and I get paid somewhere around the equivalent of a, an assistant head or a, even a deputy head. So it's a considerably higher wage for doing a lot less and having a lot less responsibility. Uh, the cost of living is higher. Like everywhere in the world, it just seems to be going up and up and up. There are definitely ways that you can uh, reduce that burden. Um, I think one of the, the good things about moving is that because you have to cancel everything in your life all of the subscriptions uh, in the first few months unless you're someone that really wants to get all of those back you'll find it really really weirdly satisfying how little you can live off of um, and then obviously as you feel more and more money coming in you can choose to have and buy additional things uh, for me the proof of that we are better off each month is in the fact that um, in the uk i never felt like i could save um even when we were trying to pay for the whole move and pay for visas and pay for visa agents it was almost like um i was having to sacrifice things in our life just to make sure that those parts of our move were paid off um, whereas here we're able to save every month like we just bought a new camper trailer and sam kind of thinks i'm a drug dealer because she kind of asks where all this, is all this money coming from and it's it's literally just saving so uh, and that's, that's a thing that i've heard from from so many people particularly with even the cost of of houses um so many people i speak to they're on our podcasts they say we actually feel like buying a home is an achievable goal in Australia in comparison to where they used to live in the UK and they kind of felt like they'd be renting forever. So if that's a marker of how much better off you can feel, I think that's a really powerful one. Blue Dog, g'day Ross. Is the Australian sun making you go great? Mate, this... Yeah, this. I've been going grey since I was 13 years old. So I've I've actually been going grey for longer than it hasn't been going grey. Uh, or pay, but perhaps it's just having kids, mate. They just make me feel tired. Um, that's why sometimes I gel it more because then you don't see it so much. 
But no, thanks. Thanks for pointing that out. Platinum highlights, I like to call them. Andrew Boy, with healthcare being free in the UK, how is it having your second one over there? Did you have uh, many medical bills? Sierra was free, mate. Um, Medicare, if you have permanent residency, is essentially Australia's version of universal healthcare. Is it fully free? I mean, is the NHS really free? You, you pay for it in your taxes. Um, in Australia, you have uh, a Medicare levy. So at the when it comes to tax time, 2% um, of your wage goes towards Medicare. Um, obviously, it depends on how much you, you earn. You can offset that with things like uh, health insurance as well. So you can get even better health care. I, I think that Medicare, for what we need from a healthcare perspective, is, is fantastic uh, and actually far better than the UK, even though that NHS system is, is great. I just think it's completely on its knees. Um, so yeah, we, we didn't have any bills at all. I think maybe if I'm being really honest, there was an extra scan that um, we needed whilst Sam was pregnant. And when we kind of thought about it and we spoke, because I, I think we might have had to have paid for that. It wasn't too much, maybe $100, $200. Um, we thought, hang on a minute we would have never been offered this kind of scan. It seems like Australian healthcare goes over and above to be able to, to cater. We just never would have got that. And I don't know, is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Even being offered it, it, it we didn't have to do it. That's the thing. If, if there are any parts of healthcare that you uh, are recommended to, we don't have to do them. Um, I just kind of feel like sometimes every health related thing that we have dealt with, we just get offered more things here. It's a bit feels a bit like pay as you go, but that, that's not a bad thing to have that choice. Alicia, uh, can you find a rental from the UK before making the move? Yes, you can. Um, and there are even relocation agents um, that will help you with that move, will help you with that part. So it's one less thing to have to worry about. Um, they essentially do all of the the legwork for you. You tell them exactly what you want, um, what your budgets are, what you're looking for, and they will essentially trawl through all of the available housing, go and do the visits. They'll even send you videos of going around it, give you advice about what they think, um, and then do the process of trying to secure it for you. Um, I've even thought to myself, I mean, I couldn't obviously help people that aren't looking to move uh, anywhere but northern Brisbane, but I don't know, would that be something that you'd want me to do? Perhaps uh, see if I could find a way that I could get you a rental. Um, I don't know, let me know, send us a message. But you can find relocation agents, definitely. Uh, Blue Dog, absolutely. We need good teachers and plenty of them. Yep. Yeah. Uh, hit the like button, folks. Cheers. Thanks for the support, bud. Uh, Kento, yeah, I have experience. Oh, every time I scroll down, I go too far. Uh, in pre-calculus. Yep, absolutely. Mate, that, that sounds like more complicated maths than I have ever known. So that would definitely be in demand. Um, Arc Fab, cheers, mate. Thanks for... The comments are uh, currently waiting on 482, but they've requested for more information we submitted and they've been waiting over a month for a response. Uh, I mean, that's pretty typical. 482s, I know um, the temporary visas, generally speaking, are a lot quicker to, to grant than permanent residency. Our one took uh, 18 months plus uh, in total for kind of all of those things. Um, but don't worry, uh, they will get back to you. That's the worst part of the whole process, I think, is just waiting for your visa to come through. Um, Connor's Comedy Chips, got to love the cheesecake. Okay. Where's the cheesecake? Um, Peter, sorry for... <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm not even... Yeah, don't, don't read about Tottenham. Uh, Gary, hi, very helpful channel. Have you encountered any racism? What are the attitudes like? I saw the UN published a report that Australia is systematically racist, reference to Aboriginal treatment. Uh, if you go through the internet and you kind of Google Australia racism, you're going to find loads and loads of things about Australians being racist. To be honest, I, I've never experienced any racism. I've never really... Um, heard people being overt about it. I guess uh, perhaps I'm just not in those kind of circles. It's a bit like Brexit when that happened and uh, people were like, oh my God, I can't believe that Brexit went through because everyone that I speak to um, 
wasn't voting for Brexit. So it just happens that in your circles, you obviously entertain like-minded people. So I guess if you are a bit racist, um, then you're probably going to attract other people who have same similar views, um, depending on, you know, whatever level of racism you are. Um, but I wouldn't go as far as to say that going down the streets, people are just overtly racist um how are indigenous aboriginal people treated i mean that's an ongoing thing i mean I've, I've i've met loads of indigenous and aboriginal people um i don't have many friends like that just because of where we live and, and our lifestyle but i don't know should i get try and get one of those on the podcast and see what they feel like to me personally the most i ever get uh, from a racism perspective is comments on the youtube channel from probably australians telling me to go home because apparently i'm a whinging pom water for ducks back mate uh meso or Masso, hello, got a PR, then left and took my family back to the UK. Uh, was there one year, eight months, and we have come back last November. Uh, now I'm concerned about my eligibility for applying for applying for citizenship. I don't think it'd be too much of a problem, mate. Um, although to be eligible, um, you have to do four years kind of continuous living there. So all that would probably happen, although don't take my word about this, is that you essentially have kind of like reset your clock by going back and then coming again. So um, what that could mean, uh, you might have to, if you want to leave the country after the five years because that's how long your permanent residency visa technically lasts it's it goes on forever but you then have to get um resident return visas after that which there's a kind of a small cost if you leave and then want to come back in again so that's probably the only thing that would uh, affect you um but you, you'd still be eligible for citizenship as long as you continue to to live here and, and fill the rest of the criteria uh, Michelle Murray, thoughts on South Australia? I I'm told it's lovely. I'm told that South Australia has a lot more culture than Queensland. Um, you're probably going to be looking at anywhere, somewhere around Adelaide, um, close proximity to Melbourne. Uh, I guess if you don't like the the, the humid heat uh, in Queensland, it's, it's a great alternative. Generally speaking, if you're concerned about heat, um, it's probably better to go further south. The further south you go, the better. If you want a kind of a quiet Australian lifestyle without the heat, then look at Tasmania. Uh, tax time, Anth. Uh, so tax time, the tax year uh, runs, I think it's around about June, end of June um, is the end of the financial year. And weirdly in Australia, you get these things called um, end of financial year sales, which is great because um, you get essentially two big, sales periods after the christmas or just before christmas and then around june which means that you know you if you want a tv at that point of the year you you might get some money off um they basically do it mainly for businesses because everyone's trying to buy up the remaining stuff at the end of the financial year because then they can claim stuff back oh yeah and in australia you can claim uh, tax back on a lot of different professions for things that you require in order to make money so as a teacher, um, weirdly, I can claim money back off of um, sun lotion because I have to use it when I'm on duty. Otherwise, I'll fry in the sun. Um, unlike the UK, where it seems like every uh, financial year, you're just wanting to know that the tax man doesn't want to speak to you because they're going to ask for money rather than give you money. Um, what are your thoughts on living in Perth, Ike? Uh, it's a great thing. I hear for, for lots of people never been there it's on the list to go to probably when sierra is a little bit older um because it's a bit of a flight but for me perth itself as a city just seems to be a little bit too isolated i like the idea of even though you know i still probably have to travel a fair few hours it'll be a few hours less than if i was living to perth if i wanted to experience a bit more of australia the one downside though is i do hear the beaches there are fantastic and especially brisbane um in Brisbane itself, beaches are a bit pants. So that's one thing that I miss. Uh, the end of the financial year. No, thanks, Blue Dog, for letting them know. Ah, Aussie Tash. Hey, Ross. Uh, how, how are you going, Tash? Nice to speak. Uh, nice to hear from you. Uh, Anthea. 
Uh, lived in Australia since I was three. Had a lot of trouble when I decided to become an Australian citizen at 50. I needed to get the help of a migration agent. Became a citizen last year. Congratulations. Uh, and nice to hear that the agent was able to help you. Sean, Perth is a lovely city, but it is actually slightly more expensive compared to, say, Brisbane due to distance of supply chain. And I also hear um, on that note, because a lot of people in Perth are are FIFO workers, so fly in, fly out, perhaps they work in the mines, uh, which pays really well, um, that can sometimes uh, overinflate the cost of things, particularly for people that don't work or in in the mines or or in FIFO. So, you know, they're, they're catering to the to the market really so that can sometimes feel a little bit um difficult nighthawk is the nursing shortage as bad as the uk wife completing her afra and beginning the job hunt um i think there is a shortage in all skilled workers in australia um in particular healthcare obviously because of covid and just after there's been a massive emphasis on on healthcare workers um but if you're looking at, is there is she going to have a problem trying to find a job? Absolutely not. Um, Peter Brown, love the response to Tottenham. <laughs> I just I just don't like talking about them. Uh, Blue Dog, how good are potato bakes? I've just why every time I scroll down, where'd it go? Da, 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 da. How good are potato bakes? I'm glad you found them because they're amazing. Every time there is a special occasion, get out of the potato bake. It's, Someone so, said to me once, oh, but they're just Dauphinois potatoes. Ugh, stop sounding so posh, mate. Just get a potato bake in you. Hi, is it possible to move to Australia from Europe on my own and start a new life there? Absolutely. 24, have no uni degree, depending, Philly, on which country you're from. Um, there's a list of all of the eligible countries with regards to a working holiday visa. If I was 24 and had no degree, um, limited qualifications, and I was looking to move to Australia and I could get a working holiday visa, that is absolutely something that I'd look to do. Um, I'd encourage that for anyone wanting to move to Australia and not wanting to to go and get further qualifications or get a trade. Um, be a chancer, see what you can do, or you know what the alternative is and, and go back and do some further study and, and try and get a, a career on a job that's on the skills list. Uh, Blue Hearts and Cats, I was born in 1963 and I was born Fauna and Flora, so take racism as it as it is we are from a bridge. Okay, sure. Uh, Robert Amy, g'day Ross, g'day mate. Uh, Ross, you are white, not Aboriginal. Well, actually I'm half Filipino, so... Um, Thanks for that. Albie and Lou, I'll be your mate, Ross. Cheers. I thought we were mates. Like, stop pretending. Uh, Blue Dog, my stepdad is olive skin like Ross. Uh, growing up, his nickname playing footy <laughs> and cricket is Blackjack. So even us stepkids uh, for the last 30 years have called him Jack. It's just a, a nickname thing in Australia is a common thing. And I guess depending on if you're going to experience racism, this is that kind of racism thing that popped up earlier. I guess the older generations, it's a very Australian thing to to kind of talk with a limited filter. In, in the UK, I, especially I was kind of feeling like people didn't ever really want to offend anyone. I don't think Australians really want to offend anyone. I just think it's part of the the generational difference that they have. And then that's just the way that they, they speak. Is it right? No. Do we live in a world where we don't, no one really wants to offend anyone, but by the same token, I don't think they're being intentional in the way they do it. So with regards to, you know, genuine racism, like people hating other people because of the color of their skin, um, you can't stop people from thinking whatever they want to think, but it's not like, People are shouting out racist things to me, as you or anyone, kind of walking down the street. Um, Blue Hearts, remember the stolen generation. Okay, yep. Don't want to get too political on it. Jeff Burden, my partner came over in 1960 as a £10 POM, wants to become an Australian citizen, but having a lot. Again, with that one, my only advice would be speak to a registered visa agent and, and what it is that you need to do to get your Australian citizenship. I have heard from a few people more recently that those people that moved over to australia a long time ago and then didn't 
ever get citizenship as quickly as possible. I've even heard of some people being kind of like threatened with deportation because they, they're essentially not citizens and they kind of wonder why do you want to kind of stay as a permanent resident forever? I get, I, I, I don't understand why you'd want to stay as a permanent resident through choice. Um, what you have to keep paying for resident return visas if you want to leave the country. Um, you'd never really have that full limit of, you know, safety of, of staying in the country. If you're not a citizen um, downside that you have to vote. Like, okay. You've got to go to a place, you get a sausage sizzle at the end of it and you just tick whatever you want on the piece of paper. No, no one really cares. I don't see why that's a bad thing. Andrew boy, how do the kids treat the teachers in school? Are they respectful? Ah, uh, kids are kids, mate. Um, I would go as far as to say that here I find that on the whole, kids are, are better than in the UK, are more respectful. Perhaps it's just the particular area that I live in. Of course, you're going to get kids that are unruly, that commit crime. Um, you hear a lot at the moment in Queensland about the kids are... Uh, it's kind of like a crime epidemic with regards to kids. Um, one of the things that I notice about kids here and how they're respectful is the way that they they still talk to you. They still say hello. I don't feel scared of teenagers in Australia necessarily. Um, I think that's a, a strong guide into to how respectful they are. With regards to when they're at school, uh, they're, exa they're exactly the same. They just sound a bit funnier. Maybe they swear a bit more but that's just an australian thing um hey we've got a question we're going through the afro racks assessment for medical professionals while waiting for the assessment to complete is there anything we can prepare i mean i don't know anna exactly what it is that you're looking to uh, prepare for i mean if you're going through the assessment already then you, you need to do whatever that is that's not the the board that i had to go through for, for my assessment um uh, i guess with regards to just moving, once you've done your assessment, you can put in your expression of interest um, and then you're kind of on that timeline. As a medical professional, it should reasonably happen quicker than for other people, I guess. But realistically, you're looking at things now of trying to just downsize and get rid of as much stuff as you want, thinking about what is it that you do want to move to Australia. Um, I, I guess that would probably be the thing that I would be looking at. Um, what stuff can we sell? What stuff do we need? Um, that that kind of side of moving to Australia, I think. Teddy, hi, I've only watched a few of your videos. And from what I've seen, you're not a whinging pom. Thanks, mate. Uh, being the on the internet. It, mate, it's, uh, it comes with the territory. If you want to help people like we do, then you're going to get some people that apparently don't see it like that. But, you know, opinions are like arseholes. Um, everyone's got one. Sean from Australia, I am an old Aussie bloke and I grew up with an Aboriginal friends and a Queensland Hounding Commission neighbourhood. We never gave our mates a hard time about their race, but there were some not from here. I mean, it, yeah, it happens. Where, if, if I think about racism in the UK and um, what was it like? I mean, growing up in the UK, olive skin, whatever you want to call it, like, I used to get called packy a lot. Um, and yeah, it's not right, but it was never really from people that I knew. So I guess, yeah, if you're meeting new people in, in Australia uh, and you get to know them or you don't get to know them, like, is that because they're racist? Is it for a multitude of other reasons? I'm just really interested in why racism seems to be such a, a hot topic this evening and not things like snakes and spiders. It's weird. I've, I've experienced more racism in the UK, but then I lived there for longer. TJ Hatch, how could anyone call you a winning palm? You're the most positive person about Australia. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'd like to just think realistic, but no, I really appreciate that. Thanks, uh, TJ. David, hi. Uh, did you choose Brisbane to live or could you have moved anywhere in Australia? We could have gone anywhere. We have an up 189 um, permanent residency visa. We could have gone anywhere. Um, we chose Brisbane literally because my geography teacher head was on. Uh, couldn't afford Sydney, couldn't afford Melbourne. Now with the house prices in Brisbane, sometimes I think if we move now, could we even afford Brisbane? But it was the third largest area by geographical reasons so i just thought to myself if i'm going to get a job 
as quickly as possible um, is probably going to be there. Um, and like I said, in three days, that's all it took. Linda, Andrew, not as good as countries who value education. Uh, I don't think the UK really values education anymore. So, or if they do, they're just trying to push people into um, universities, which I don't think is the right thing. I think in Australia, they value qualifications. Um, you know, you have to be qualified to do a lot of different things. You can't just go around and do whatever you want. So it, it's different. You don't have to be university educated in Australia to be very successful. And if that means not valuing education, it doesn't, I don't think it means that the kids are, are unruly and bad. They just want to go and do something different, which is, we only get one shot at this life. We should all be entitled to do that. Katie, uh, on the healthcare topic, the state's children's hospital is ranked as one of the best in the world and it's public. I was a patient till 22 years receiving nothing but the best treatment. Yep. Fantastic. Great. Thanks for, thanks for sharing that. Uh, Mitch, I lived in Perth since 2018 and it's grown heaps. I never feel isolated here. Great to hear. And I, I reckon when I do visit there, I probably won't feel isolated either. Or there'll definitely be some things that I can only do in Perth. Uh, Blue Dog just replying to Sean. Andrew, living in Australia, do you find it costly to go on holiday with your family, say from Brisbane to Cairns or so? Would you drive it? Uh, we, we've been to Cairns, me and Sam. Um, we went there when um, we first came to Australia, actually. It was, you know, she wanted to experience Australia before we'd even kind of thought specifically about moving there. I've just lost the question. Um Holidaying in Australia, I think, can be quite expensive, mainly because of the the cost of, of hotels and accommodation. It's one of the reasons why we we bought a camper. Um, we bought a Jayco Swift so that we can visit more of Australia um, and without the kind of extra cost of having to pay for accommodation. We can, we can go where we want. We kind of um, have our, our home with us. Would I drive to Cairns? Absolutely. Um, I kind of, I often thought to myself, if we, we did go there, I'd love to go there with the kids. Um, how much would it cost flying up there? The flights during um, holiday times seem to be crazy anyway. Then we'd have the extra cost of the accommodation. We'd have to rent a car. Whereas actually, you know, I could probably drive. We, when I grew up, we used to holiday a lot in the south of France. So that whole idea of driving through the night 1600 k's to get somewhere and then arriving there in the morning isn't necessarily a problem that i ever experienced growing up so i'd like to continue that kind of thing with my own kids my own family um and that's one of the reasons why we've got the camper and if we want to stop in places on the way visit parts of australia that otherwise we never would have kind of thought to go to um it's, it's something that you can do very very cheaply and they've got these websites where you can find essentially free camping places so you can visit and see a lot of australia definitely on the cheap um if you don't rely on um accommodation all the time uh da, 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 linda lots of clovers uh how do you find postal service and online shopping how do you find amazon it's slower here andrew not gonna lie um you send things, they do arrive. Nothing is as quick. If you live in some of the big metropolitan areas, Sydney, Melbourne, you're going to find a lot more one day delivery stuff in Brisbane. You can still find that you won't find anything that's delivered in the same day. Like I used to find in the UK. Um, but mate, if it was that important, you'd order it quicker. Oh, hello, man. Uh, if it was that, um, important, you'd have ordered it sooner. You wouldn't have to rely on it. So quickly but the whole pace of life is slower here um abbas is an english pgc recognized in most states absolutely um just make sure on your transcript it has the right amount of days that uh, are covered that's just something that seems to be a lot of people um fall down on they have to speak to their university just to make sure it says the right thing teddy you keep freezing so i leave and return numerous times and that fixes it sorry mate um perhaps it's the internet perhaps it's your internet uh if anyone else is also experiencing that problem let us know blue does it seem like there's a lot of residential development in brisbane absolutely in particular where we are 
this is one of the or well, not one of this is the fastest growing area in australia there's lots and lots of development lots of building going on around here at the moment um it's one of the reasons why the kids that where i teach they are able to get apprenticeships in in loads of different trades because there's just so much growth at the moment um greetings from quincy massachusetts Hey, Fezzik. Nice to nice to see you. Didn't I, I often wonder sometimes how many American viewers we get. Uh, the Great Emigrate. Hey, Ross, are you up for a collab at some point? Absolutely. Uh, send us a message on Instagram. Uh, we can talk further. Always happy to, to speak to other people that are making the mood. Anth the Mackham, 34, and I'll have a working holiday visa now. Hey, congratulations mate e proving that even right up until the age limit i think it's 35 now um living the dream uh message us any must do's must do's if you want to continue further than a year is uh do your your rural residential work although i have heard particularly for uk um citizens that they might be scrapping that so um I'll have a little look whether you have to do the farm work because um, I have heard that it can sometimes be pretty tough. Um, but I think the, the thing that you must do is have the open mind to to travel rather than settle, settle down. There's plenty of time to, to settle down. Um, I wouldn't want people to just kind of come to all the way to Australia to just experience one bit of it and then never really get to see as much as possible. So just that that's you must do, in my opinion, have that mentality with with your year or more of living here. And I hope it, it ends up being as, as long as you can get it to be. Peter, thank you for your responses. Have an effing good day. Uh, been awesome listening to this. Cheers, mate. I'm assuming you have to jump off. Uh, wow, that sounds Dutch. Lou Jordan. I'm not even going to try. Ah, oh, from South Africa. Well, a bit of a Dutch influence. Thanks for your content. We are also making the move. Fantastic. Uh, massive um, South African um, contingent. Loads of South Africans here. Um, if anything, I've really got into Biltong since being in Australia. Um Love the South Africans that work in there. My favorite Biltong shop in Strathpine. Uh, working on label is uh, Dab, Nab, Autocorrect. No, nah, no, we know what it is, mate. Uh, Andrew Boy, how did you find shopping compared to the UK? Are there more malls, shopping centers, or is it more street shopping? Uh, lots more malls. Um, they don't really have – well, they do have a high street. Um, it seems to be – particularly in Brisbane anyway, that it's more of a mall type of thing. I think it's just the way that Brisbane grew up with regards to the use of the cars and, and stuff like that. If you want the more street shopping UK style, you have to go um, more into the city. Um, like, for example, Queen Street Mall, it's all kind of like that. That to me feels more like a, a UK high street kind of feel. Um, so you, you can get it. Um, but to be honest... There's a reason why malls became so popular because it's just easy with with everything in one place and shopping, unlike malls and shopping centres in the UK that seem to charge the earth just to part with your money. Um, most of them here are free or, or at least free for the first few hours. So um, that's a good thing. Um, Dome pop. What the fuck? All right. Nice. Cheers for that. Uh, Anthea Philly, get a sponsorship from a workplace for the Jobs Australia. Okay. I hope that helps you out, Philly. Linda, no China, you're right. Rhyming slang. Okay. Don't pop. Some countries don't accept dual citizenship. Absolutely. But I guess if you've lived uh, in Australia for that many years, then you just have to make the choice of do you want to give up the other one, really? If you're going to stay in Australia, why wouldn't you just get that citizenship? Otherwise, you, you won't have a choice and they'll send you back. Uh, Anthea, I was on the £10 POM or Irish as a three-year-old. That's why I needed to get a migration agent. Fantastic. Glad he helped you out, Anthea. HP Traders, hi. Gordon, I came as a £10 POM too. Glad you got your Aussie citizenship. Um, Nighthawk, other than Brisbane, where else would you recommend on living? Mate, it really depends on what you want from your lifestyle. Um, the beauty of Australia is it's so big and so varied that whatever it is that you're looking for, you can probably get it. Um, the only difference might be how much you would be expected to pay for it. So um, you need to be a bit more specific, bud. 
Uh, the P's there. How long do you have to be in work to get maternity pay and how does it compare to the UK? So one of the things that we, I mean, it, ultimately it does depend on your employer, but to be able to get the, the state uh, paternity leave uh, two years on permanent residency. Um, that's one of the reasons why uh, we waited until we did to, to have Sierra. Um, Australia is taking 500,000 this year. Absolutely. Yep. Um, they are looking at what they need to do to, to slow that amount. But I think with particularly for the UK, with the way it's going and the cost of living, um, all that's going to mean is that people just potentially might have to wait a bit longer. Jeff, thanks, Anthea. Uh, using the abbreviation. Linda, a bit whingy. Oh, thanks, mate. Uh, I think there's just people are talking to each other at the moment. Let's see if I can find another question. You see, hi, I can ask, what stuff do you sell and move? Uh, to be honest, we we had a move cube. Um, we packed in their memories, so stuff that we know that we couldn't replace because it had sentimental value to us. That's probably the stuff that I would say. Anything else, um, we never had any nice things, so we didn't need to keep it for that purpose, and we were just of the view that, We'll just sell it and buy a nice new one where we got here. Um, that's probably what I would say. I don't send things because you need it in the short term as well, because, you know, unless you can get your timing absolutely right, chances are when you send stuff, you're probably going to have to wait until it arrives anyway. So you'll just end up buying one. So don't worry about that. Just sell as much as you can. Send the sentimental stuff. Um, if you want to send something through, send my bag because it's just a, a suitcase worth of stuff. Uh, check out our channel because we've got a five percent off you can save you some money with a semi bag if you want something smaller um linda jennifer what do you think about the family activities in australia yeah absolutely absolutely family activities are better uh and the main reason why i think they're better two main reasons why i think they're better the first one is because you have the weather to do all of those family activities uh, so a lot of them are outside and because they're outside, um, a lot of them are free or very, very low cost. Um, it feels like a lot of the times when, All right, Dan. Hello, mate. um, it feels like a lot of times when you're doing family activities in the UK, you're having to spend money on doing them. Um, and here you can, especially with younger kids, you can very, very easily do things for free, if not super cheap. So um, making memories with your family in Australia doesn't have to cost you the earth. Uh, Blue Hearts trades are a shortage. Absolutely. Uh, what's your opinion on the can? Is that the one where they're going to do a trade agreement with Canada, Australia and the UK? I mean, I don't really know a lot about it. Probably sounds like it's going to be uh, just specifically a trade. If you're talking about... Um, is it ever going to be uh, fr like free movement between those countries? Never going to happen, mate. Never going to happen. They make so much money and by not allowing people to freely move in. And to be honest, it, it, it's a good thing because they can vet the amount of people. And, and you can't move here unless you're going to be of benefit, which I totally agree with. Uh, the P's there. How long do you have to be in work to get maternity pay? How does it compare to you? Oh, I've done that one. Sorry, I tried to do that scroll down again and it didn't work. Uh, Ross, still holding on to those cigars and 20-year-old brandy for when we catch up one day. Is this the guy, Stoic Philosopher, is this the guy that lives in Melbourne? Absolutely. Uh, or you'll obviously, if you follow us on Instagram, you'll obviously hear when we eventually do get down there. I did um, speak to Sam uh, about even one of the holidays this year about doing it. Um, but then we got the camper, so... It's not in the immediately short term, but it's getting closer. We will get to Melbourne soon. Um, Blue Hearts, WA is great for families. I, I agree. Um, lots of families on our podcast have moved there. Uh, the Park family. Hi, Ross. The wait for a visa grant is excruciating. Yep, it's the worst bit. Any tips or things that you wish you had had done better whilst waiting or you really organized? Um no mate i'm not organized at all and that's one of the reasons why we do this channel and we create this content trying to help people to be more organized one tip um get rid of stuff get rid of as much stuff as possible you yes keep the memory things but you you don't need 
half the things that you think you need. Um, and it's probably better to just take the money and either use it as a opportunity to declutter. I'm playing with a dog down here, by the way. Um, use it as an opportunity to just declutter your life. Um, but on that note about, you know, what what things to do, um, we are looking at the, the prospect of, of making guides um, to help people with all different aspects of, of, of wanting to make the move. So if that is something that you'd be interested in, um, guides to help you make the move let us know on here let us know on instagram um let us know specifically what kind of guides you'd be interested in um and we'll push them to the top of the list when we we start pushing them out um you see is it better to move my car from the uk or is it better to buy a new one uh it's better to buy one here um depends on what car you have if you have a really really fancy one i had a 2003 Ford Focus so there was no point in um, moving it across at all um, you will hear that cars in Australia are expensive um, it's just one of those things that the cost of living is a bit more for cars I generally think is he going to sit on that sofa a little git um, but particularly if you buy yourself a Toyota, the thing's going to last forever. So I think cars here are just designed to be here. I wouldn't want you to bring one from any country and then have it just die completely. And if you buy something that's in abundance in Australia, you'll, you'll be able to get parts easily. Uh, Linda, we have a Namby Pamby technical trade avenue for the kids instead of old school apprenticeships. Yeah, I don't know which country you're talking about. Um, I mean, they've got apprenticeships here. Uh, Nicola, Nicola, sorry. Hi, Ross. Is it possible to do a podcast with a nurse who has moved to Australia from the UK? It would be helpful to get their perspective of visa processes. Yep, absolutely. We we did do a podcast with uh, Magda. She was uh, a nurse originally from Poland. She's currently in the process of making her move. She contacted me recently and uh, everything is, I think, granted now. So she's looking at kind of what she has to do to make that move she will def when she does um she'll definitely be back um but we'd love to speak to other nurses that have also made the move just because i know that there are lots of people wanting more information charlotte hello we contacted true blue migration on your recommendation we are looking at applying for 189 but feel we need to visit australia first did you visit first to figure out where you wanted to live um we did visit australia first i had been to australia as a kid when i was 10 um i brought sam over probably two or three years before we ended up making the move um all right itchy um but no we'd never been to brisbane so do you need to come here to kind of confirm the idea mate if you want to move to australia and that urge is strong enough that you've already started doing the visa process there's probably not a lot that's going to stop that so i don't think that you need to move here to figure it out um but if one of the things that I kind of do think about is could you move here and spend some time a bit like on a working holiday visa and just traveling around? I mean, we couldn't because we got kids. But if you are young enough and without that kind of element of responsibilities, why would what just try that out? I think that would be a great idea. Save your money. You don't have to visit here. Um, but if you want to, that's great. But if you can maybe do you visit him and moving around while you're here uh drive you see more absolutely linda totally agree don't pop coming from europe and saying australia is expensive okay uh hi ross sophie is there anything you wish you'd pack for yourselves and the kids warmer clothing is the main one for us we thought it would be warmer than it is i mean i've never been to australia uh in the winter and the homes here are designed for the hot rather than the cold, particularly in Queensland. So, yeah, I, I think I chucked away more warm clothing than I probably needed to. Uh, Bex, hi, Ross, joining you from the chilly south coast of the UK. A cloudy and windy nine degrees. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'd much rather be here too. Nine degrees. Any, I, I often think it's cold if the temperature even starts with a one, let alone just one digit. Um Julie, hi, Ross and Sam. I've been watching you guys for quite some time and never once thought of you as a whinging pom. Cheers, mate. Um, oh, I think it is a term of endearment now. I just, I've, 
I just like to hear it because I've got one of those weird sense of humours. Uh, let's go Brentford. Okay. Um, hopefully I can land a job in Brisbane. Yep. Hope so too, Kento. Uh, Andrew, how do you find the summer heat and humidity? Is it too much that you can't go out or it's decent? I mean, absolutely. During the peak of the summer, it does get really, really overbearing. Sam doesn't enjoy the humidity as much as I do. Um, having a pool certainly helps. Um, you do find yourself going just from aircon to aircon, but you you change how you go about things in the day. Like for example, we don't go to parks as much in the summer. We'd go and do more water based activities, but in the winter we go to parks and you you put up with that three months of the year of heat just for the other nine months when the weather's pretty much perfect. But if you do kind of just want more of a bit I, I, this is one thing good thing for perth i think i've heard that the weather is a little bit less overbearing in the winter it gets hotter but the humidity just isn't there which is what you know it's the humidity that'll get you that's what a lot of people say the apartment games yeah it's been scrapped from june there you go thanks for that uh, working holiday visa if you're coming from the uk from june you might not have to do your farm work um Da, da, da. AJ Lan Lanazone, is there any show business in Australia? Do they film TV shows there? I want to move from Hollywood. Uh, yeah, they do. I mean, Australia has its own TV and film industry. There's lots of films that are filmed exclusively in Australia. Um, I probably would stay in Hollywood if you really want to be an actor, but yeah, they, it does happen here. Uh, Linda. Can't get much, can't get in the UK much now. Okay. Chris, if you move with your partner, his visa, do I need a skills assessment for a job in IT? No. Um, however, all right, Dennis. However, um, if you don't get the skills assessment, you wouldn't know if your qualifications do actually transfer over but realistically you apply for the job and they'll tell you whether you're qualified or not to be able to do it um bill tong is a must simple to make yourself oh my name is basically loki okay there you go i would never have thought that cheers bud and i, I don't think i'm brave enough to make bill tong myself china plate mate sg cheers for the comment mate uh blue dog they have a good doco on sbs the other day about 10 pound palm yeah no i have heard that i haven't watched it yet uh al Rhodes, been watching channel for a long time getting pr fantastic hopefully it comes soon for you oh i've done that scroll thing it hasn't happened again there we go right uh breeders unite some people mate some people Georgia Ray, put in our EOI for the 190 state sponsorship for Queensland. Hardby is a plumber. I'm a dig marketing manager. What is that? And heard it is hard to get work considering retraining as a teacher. Uh, I don't know what a dig marketing manager is. I'm assuming it's something to do with marketing. Um, one thing I have heard is that for some people that have a very specific job role, which if I've not heard of it, I'm assuming that is, it can be hard to get work because things aren't exactly the same. Or I would just look at um, branching out into something that's similar, but ever so slightly different. For example, to put that into perspective, uh, I'm a geography teacher. I was a, a head of geography when I worked in the UK. I now in reasonably academic schools. Um, and now I work uh, as an English teacher, um, teaching kids who primarily are trying to get trades but also finish uh, their high school education which is a, a, a massive change to, to my background of teaching but actually something that I find a lot more fulfilling so um, is it hard to get work it might be hard to get your specific subject unless of course like you're a maths teacher um, but it's in your specific role yes it might be hard but rather than changing completely to retrain as a teacher I don't, I'm not saying that's a bad thing if that's what you want to do that's a great idea too but I would just look a little bit broader with what your skill set might be able to offer for a job um, I hope that helps Al question if you move now would you buy or rent uh, I mean I'd rent to start off with but I've, I've always wanted to, to buy so I'd look to buy as quick as possible that's what we did uh, Tom hey Ross 
Uh, is childcare and teaching still a profession in demand over there? Teaching assistants also living a very similar lifestyle to yours. Is 50 grand enough to get set up? 50 grand is absolutely enough to get set up in Brisbane. Um, depending on where it is that you want to live, I'm assuming you're going to use that as, as part of a deposit. Um, is childcare and teaching assistants still a profession in demand? Absolutely, particularly if you're looking at early childcare. Um, just make sure that your qualifications um, transfer over well. But yep, yeah, anything to do with teaching and childcare, always in demand. Anthea, uh, hi everyone, get a migration agent. Uh, I was getting nowhere until I did. And there you go, another person happy with using a migration agent. Linda, if you're in Melbourne, go to Moomba. The Birdman rally is on tomorrow, okay? Thanks for the uh, heads up. Uh, FFP Matthias. Matthias, hi. What do you think about studying in Australia at university? Uh, I haven't got any experience with that at all. Um, the only experience I have is just obviously what I've seen. And in comparison to studying in the UK, whilst there's still a, a cost, um, it's not free, it's much cheaper, particularly if you're a citizen or a permanent resident than, than studying in the UK. Al, moving from the UK, Gloucester, hopefully around August to get to Brisbane, trying to declutter. Yeah, it's, uh, it's probably the second or third hardest part is just getting rid of all your stuff after waiting for your visa to arrive. Um, where are we up to? Uh, Gary, I assume traffic is comparable to the UK, bad in cities, better in the suburbs. Yep, pretty much. Um, I would go as far as to say, particularly where we used to live, we used to live uh, near Reading, just outside of London. Uh, where we live in Brisbane right now, I find um, the Bruce probably comparable to the M4. Um I don't think it's worse. Um, Dome pop cost of living is not bad. The UK is more expensive in every way. Um, yeah, everything is rising here, but I think that the wages for them now are still um, the thing that makes it a lot more affordable. Uh, on that note with traffic as well, actually, if I did work in the city and I had to, I wouldn't drive, um, I'd get the train. It's a lot cheaper. The experience is a lot better. You know, I've done it a few times in um, rush hour time because of you know courses and things in the, in the city, especially living in Brisbane. Uh, that's how I'd get in there. I've got friends that live in the city. They get the train all the time. You can park at the stations for free. Um, there's a bit of a problem at some of the ones at the moment because they're they're getting upgraded. Oh, that's a problem. But then it means that um, some people can't use those stations, so then they have to travel to others, which makes it a bit busier. Um, Australians love to call us whinging poms, but then if you change their way of life or their lifestyle, they're really very quick to whinge about it as well. Um, Linda, I think she's talking about me being attentive in the chat. Well, that is literally the whole point of the q and I've got to answer your questions, but thanks. Uh, cheers, Blue Dog. Summer, not the whole of the year. I'd take the summers here over a, a UK winter. Uh, are teaching salaries generally still ahead of the UK or are they similar now? Nope, still ahead, still ahead. Although I know that they did get a bit of a pay increase, but they're, they're still ahead. Um, Bex, do you know much about the new replacement for the 482? No, I don't know. I don't know about that one. Sorry. Cameron, hi, Ross. We're thinking of moving to Australia. My wife would come over and look for employment on a sponsored visa, whereas I'm self-employed. Do you have any advice for people coming over as self-employed? My only bit of advice would be, to what extent can you continue doing your business from here? Because if you can do that and you can still essentially replicate it and keep it exactly the same, why not? Um, the only difference is obviously from a tax perspective, you'd have to pay tax in Australia as well on your foreign earnings. Um, but in the short term, whilst you're probably going to try and set up your business again in Australia, um, could you just keep doing it from where you are? Uh, Linda, we don't really have summer in Victoria, but March cometh. Yep. Yeah. All right. Let's have a look. <laughs> Chris, moved to Brisbane in January, loving the weather, but when does it start to cool down a bit? Uh, April. 
even if you go out now, Chris, in the evenings, you'll probably find that it, it's a lot cooler. Whereas a couple of months ago, maybe last month, it would probably be still warm, even when it's dark. So it's starting to cool. Georgia, uh, digital marketing manager. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, there are, I, I would imagine that there's digital marketing managers here. Probably more like remote ones. Even if you lived in, for example, Brisbane, you can probably get a job still working in or for a company in Sydney. Uh, Ria, is it hard to find a job in IT in Melbourne after having three years work experience outside of Australia? Do they? Um, I would go as far as to say that if you're thinking about do they consider those years of work for where you're put on the pay scale? I mean, it's up to them, really. It's up to you how you negotiate your pay in those kind of jobs. I'd go as far as to say a job in IT in Melbourne, if you're working for a company, it's up to you to negotiate yourself in that role. Um, if it was a, a government type of one, I, I mean, I wouldn't, where there's less flexibility from negotiation, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't consider those kind of um, years of experience. Um, they did consider my working experience uh, outside of Australia as a teacher, but that's because I had the correct proof that I could show that it was valid. So that's just something to take into consideration. Um, what are we up to? Chris, if we compare the numbers of criminal activities Australia with Europe, the numbers in Australia have been so much higher. When we were there on vacations, we did not see anything. What's your opinion? I mean, without data and specifics and where's your source, I don't really know. In my experience about crime here is it, it still happens, um, but I feel like it's much less and I feel much safer here. Um Ross, ah, oh, from Big P. Yeah, how you going, mate? Nice to see you. Coming over from uh, our Instagram. Just looking, lots of people are, are responding to other people, which is great. Uh, Chris, do you know how high is the probability to get PR after three years or longer if you both have a good job, GP? Well, if you're a GP, mate, I'm assuming you can probably get permanent residency straight away anyway because um, like, you work in the medical field. But it, uh, how high is the probability? It really depends on your um, visa. And most of it, the even the temporary visas, work visas now, they have given pathways to, to get permanent residency, which are normally after three years. How high is the probability? I guess, well, as long as you stick to the requirements of it, you're going to be entitled. It's, it's not a... It's not whether they're going to do it for you. It's just, have you done what they've asked? Um, our Arsenal are going to win the league. Um, absolutely. I think this year is going to be our year. Banging in goals for fun at the moment, but there's still plenty of time to fall off the wagon, I guess. What do you think of Tottenham? I'm trying to keep this PC, mate. Yeah. Don't want to, you don't want to hear what I really think about Tottenham. Uh, Katie, you make a fair point. Um, like most professions, childcare educators are probably underpaid. Um, but in comparison to how much they're paid um, in other countries, you know, some people would probably still argue that teachers are underpaid. I'd always love a pay rise. But compared to what we were used to, it's still worth doing. And then for the rest of other things as well, to get the visa, it's worth it. Uh, does volunteer work count as years experience for PR visa requirements? Lottie, probably not. Probably not. Um, Pizda, the Pizda, what do you reckon would be a comfortable salary for a family of four in Brisbane? Uh, I've answered this one already. I reckon anywhere in and around $150,000 combined total income, you, you'd be pretty comfortable. Um, I'm not even sure if me and Sam earn that sometimes. Da -da -da. 
da, da, da. For everyone who has just kind of expressed their appreciation for our videos, like I really appreciate you spending the time to, to thank us. Please don't think that I'm being rude by not reading out your comment out loud. I am reading it. I'm just trying to focus on the questions so that I can answer as many questions as possible. Um, Blue Dog, what is, Ross, what is your favourite thing about moving to Australia? The Chinese four-wheel drive, camper van, house and pool, the job or what? Uh, my favourite thing about moving to Australia is being able to see my kids be kids. Um, because in the UK, I felt that kids weren't allowed the opportunity to be kids just because of the lifestyle that they would lead. They'd be on screens all of the time. They'd have to pay to do things. And when I came to Australia as a 10 year old, I even, even back then in what was that like the nineties, I could even feel how much more outdoorsy Australia was in comparison to what I led in the UK. And I was still pretty outdoorsy. I did a lot of sport, but that it still remained here and you know yes we do use tablets yes the kids watch tv but they have that's more of like a downtime type of thing more often than not they're wanting to play outside on bikes on scooters on in parks and for me that's my favorite bit about australia is being able to watch my kids live their lives like that um rather than being cooped up indoors all the time um luke convinced by your mate fantastic great to hear uh we definitely need plumbers as well is vb a good beer richard singh oh, it depends who you ask i wouldn't choose it although saying that i did choose it the other day just because of the choices that were there uh i enjoy it the only times i ever had a vb in the uk though was in a dodgy walkabout and they tasted terrible and i remember the first time i had one here and i was like mm, some people might not like the flavor it's reasonably strong if that's what you're into um but no i wouldn't i wouldn't normally pick it Morgan, uh, when did you find it hard living across the world from family? We thought it'd be a lot more difficult than it was. Um, Sam is is really quite close to her family. Um, although saying that when we were in the UK, we didn't necessarily require a lot of them for like for support. Um, we did rely on them um, looking after Aurora one day a week while Sam went to work. But I guess as long as you have a good relationship with your spouse and you're accepting of, of doing what you need to do to, to make your new life work and then realizing that like, this is your family. Now it's not to say that your other family isn't your family anymore, but this is, this is the family you're, you're making your own new family unit. Um, not at the expense of the other family, but just that's the one that takes priority then you find it a lot more easily realizing who you're doing it for rather than yeah you're doing it for you and your kids and you can do it uh loki i'm gonna make that video about uh what you need for kids to move into school soon so hopefully that'll answer your question <laughs> vb's crap as long as it's on special i agree with that yeah I'd buy it then. Uh, Blue, have you done uh, anything to do with people that have moved from South Africa? No. And if there is anyone, any of our followers that have made the move from South Africa, I would be really interested to see, to, to learn what your life was like and how it's different in Australia. So please 
reach out to us, contact us. We'd love to have you on the podcast. Um, I am going to call time on this in a minute, so I'm just going to try and do the the last few. Uh, Dome Pop, how do the stabbings compare from <laughs> England to Australia? They still happen, but they seem to make news here. And uh, I can only assume that, because they seem to have happened a lot more in the UK, but they just wouldn't be able to report on them if they did every single one. So, yes, it does happen. I feel safer here. I mean, God, I, I've had a knife pulled on me twice in the UK. I mean, I don't go out roaming the streets perhaps as much in Australia as I did in England, but no, I, I don't hear about it as much here. But it does make the news every now and again. The Here's the one thing. Um, it feels like if there is ever any crime committed in Australia, not only does it make news, but also you seem to... F they find who it was a lot quicker and catch them. Uh, Bex, tell me how to convince my teens that moving towards would be a good thing. I want them to get off their Xboxes and experience more of the world. You're going to need to get them another hobby, Bex. Because if they're really interested in being on their Xboxes at the moment, then that's the thing that's going to keep them. Yeah, they can still be on your Xbox in Australia. They still work here. Um, you still play the games here, but you would have to find them an alternative activity outside. The one as well that they would give them more if they did it in Australia. That would be what I'd be looking to how I'd wean them off the Xbox. Uh, Ida, torn between Australia or Canada. Did you have trouble picking your country? Mate, I just didn't want the cold. I've got a mate that lives in Canada, but that's because he's now married a Canadian. So that would be the only reason why I'd go to Canada. But I, just, I couldn't. You know that thing where it's so cold you can throw up a cup of boiling water and it just freezes in the air? I'd love to do that, but I'd only love to do it once. And then that's it. I'd want to get out of the cold. So that would be the, it for me. I just wouldn't want to live in that cold. That would be the what, easiest way to decide my, my choice. Um, the peas there. Any other things to take? into consideration using a relocation agent for a rental any other key things that can be taken care of before arriving to make the transition easier try and get as much of the um, evidence that you need for things like medicare um, sorting your bank account out try and get them and, and have it all in a pack because you'll need to take that pack to so many different places to to sign up for things just get it all ready all labeled and then every time you have to do it it would just make it so much easier. Yeah, st stealing cars, I think, is quite a common thing here. But again, that kind of stuff seems to make the news. If you wanted to make the news for every time a car was stolen in the UK, they'd just that would be all they'd ever talk about. Uh, is there a large South African population in WA? Probably. Particularly considering the distance that even shorter for them just going to WA. Uh, Richard, do they do they still sell Castle Main Forex? Yeah, yeah. This Milton Mango is pretty popular. Massive sponsor for the Broncos. Right. Uh, I think I'm done to the end of the questions now. So thank you very much for tuning in. I hope we have answered all of your questions. Um, if you have any more questions or you want to know anything else or anything in particular, we always love to answer questions. It's follow, find us on Instagram, send us a DM. Uh, we might not be able to answer you straight away because, you know, I'm living a life, but uh, I'll always try and get around to, to messaging you. And if you haven't heard back, uh, you know, perhaps it's dropped to the bottom of the list. So, again, don't worry about being that person of just give us a nudge and send us another message to remind us. It, I'd rather help you out than you think I'm a bit of a prick and never spoke to you. So, um, thank you for joining us, for joining us this evening. Uh, wherever you are, have a great rest of your day. And, uh, I think I'm going to try and get a video out tomorrow. So see you soon.